Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And the other day I got a copy of one of the very first uh, funnel pages being built inside of CF 2.0. And this is a funnel hub, a basically a WordPress looking kind of a page. And now just before I get in here and kind of show you what I'm finding inside of here and dissect it a little bit, I want to let you know is that Right now, the plan, according to ClickFunnels, is that we may be getting, and it's a big maybe, we may be getting first access to what will be the uh, Funnel Hub Challenge coming in January. Who knows when in January, if in January at all. But if they then stick to their original plan, we would get this in January, we would get the courses in February, and we would get the cart funnels in March. And then it would be open to beta at that point in April and not roll out into the general public until June. And that, of course, is a lot of ifs and maybes. And so who knows, it could very well get pushed back again, or they may speed up the release of these challenges too. We have no idea at this point. All I'm basically saying is it's going to be at least a few months, maybe even the middle of next year, before you're going to really have access for most people to ClickFunnels 2.0. But in the meantime, let's just go back to this page that we have right here. And so like I said, this is one of the very first pages that I have seen being built inside of ClickFunnels. And so let's just scroll down the page to start off with. Uh, so we got two sections up here at top. And I can tell you right now, they're already universal sections only because I've looked at this before. And then we got another section here. Uh, probably a fourth section right there. And you can see there's some animations. As I scroll back up to the page, you see Dan Kennedy come sliding in here. And as we scroll down, then these items actually drop down from the top. So some of that functionality is in the original ClickFunnels. Also, we've all seen that on plenty of WordPress sites. And as we scroll down the screen here, um, you know, more, you know, three column row here with some buttons on it. Uh, another three column row on this section right here. And then you saw there again, you see the two images come sliding in from the sides. Again, that's capable in, in the existing version. Two column row right there. Another four column row right down there. And again, you saw some stuff come sliding in from the side some cell phones right there. And then we have a footer at the bottom. So it looks pretty much like um, anything else, like ClickFunnels 1.0 or any other funnel builder at this point. The magic is going to be what's behind the scenes. And so let's just take a look at that, some of the interesting things I found in here. And one of them is you come in into the code, and the top part of the code here is totally different. This is, Again, it's a totally different platform. And so we see right here, blueprints style so let's open that up for our style and we got here uh, data page element of content node and some styling here specifically the width and and height and stuff and then we have another uh, section container and we got some padding on that a call container a column container some padding and stuff on there. And you're going to see this is all sizing type padding. And then you also hear as we come along, we got call container V1, row container V1, collection container. Collections are what will become membership sites, collection container. And what it's doing is it's spelling out here exactly what the theme is supposed to look like. And remember that in ClickFunnels 2.0, we're going to be able to create themes and then come in and be able to pick those themes. And so it's showing in these here exactly the size and shapes of the theme or the, the elements, the larger elements especially, inside of that theme that you built. And again, on and on. And But again, remember, we got this V1, so like image V1. Video V1, bullet list V1. There should be a button in here, a paragraph, all that. And I was talking to a ClickFunnels employee the other day, and we'll just keep scrolling down here. I don't think there's anything else. It just kind of keeps going on, like all the elements on the page, basically, you set up when you set up your themes. And then we get down here at the bottom. So there's a podcast link, course products, 
more and more and more and more of the same. And I'm trying to get to the bottom. Okay, here we go. But I was talking to a ClickFunnels employee the other day. And I said, yeah, based on this, looking at this, what this indicates to me is that we can have multiple different themes. And on the next part here, we have image V1 and button V1. And I said, that indicates to me that we're going to be able to set up different image styles, different button styles, different paragraph styles, et cetera, et cetera, um, all within when we're building out our themes. And then as you're going through the page, you're going to be able to, okay, we're going to put a button in here. Which one of your three different buttons that you created do you want? You click on one of them, boom, that button goes in there. It's already been completely created. You don't have to recreate it. So let's open it up. And we have our image styling and our button styling right here. And as I was talking to this guy, he just kind of like stopped and looked at me. Now they were completely sworn not to say anything. And they're all doing a really great job. But he just kind of gave me that look like, uh, oh, you're not quite as dumb as you look kind of a look. So I kind of figured that's, and, and I could be completely wrong. It's just purely speculation until we see the inside of it. But then you come down and we have here a universal section and there's actually three universal sections right here. And again, you got to think about it. If you're going to be able to have universal sections that can go across multiple sites so that when you make a change in one universal section, it reflects on every other site as well. Think about if you're like putting in a footer and your phone number or your address changes or something like that, you don't want to have to change it in 50 different funnels. You want to just be able to go in there, change the address once, and it'll go across everything else. And so then you're also going to have... Uh, you know, you're going to have your styling for it. You're going to have your colors. You're going to have the images. You're going to have all that. And so for each one of these universal sections, it's pulling in its own style. So we have all the information here, exactly what this universal section should look like, including here's the, uh, the unique class identifiers. They're not using IDs in here. They're just using unique class identifiers. And so each one of those spells out exactly what the different elements will look like inside of this universal section. And so we have several of those right there. And then we have our style guide. And here in the root, we have some uh, what are, uh, they, they're known as CSS variables. They actually call them something else too, but everybody just calls them variables. And um, so we got here um, this element, and then we got one color. But if you notice, here's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're able to set up six different colors. And here we got size, uh, we got font size, headline, XL, L, M, S. And then, so these are the headlines. And you have subheadline, extra large, large, medium, small. And then you have content, extra large, large, medium, small. And I think there's also, uh, you change the uh, font colors or something maybe too. Or I guess that would be the colors up here. And then you have your HTML element. And then again, down the way here, we have again, um, style guide, headline, XL, L, large, medium, small, subheadline, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're setting up a lot of different sizes of the fonts. You're setting up different colors. So again, it's going to be a lot more like WordPress where you're going to set up your theme and your colors and your buttons and all that kind of stuff and then just kind of pull them in. Just like what Russell said is you're going to be able to create, let's say, an OTO page and you find that that OTO page works really good. So you can just take that OTO page and drop it into as many funnels as you want and and anytime you make a change on that OTO page, then of course it will change it throughout all the different funnels if you were to change it. So we got different colors here, on and on. So I mean, there's going to be a million little settings inside of here that we're all going to have to learn how to set up. And then let me see here, we got page node styles. And the page node... Um, I'm not right, quite sure on this one here, but again, it is different styling of elements. I was going to say each one, when you see the, the graphical interface of the uh, different pages and the lines that go between them, each one of those pages represents what they call a node, uh, but I'm not sure quite how this relates to that. It could be completely something different. So we'll just keep scrolling down here. Well, in fact, what I'm going to do now is let's go over here and let's inspect this top element. 
So we'll click on this and we'll come back up here a little bit to where do I have to go? It's been a few days since I looked at this here. So we got our section there because this should be a, oh, here we go. Universal section right here. So this is, so we got a content node above this, but that represents the entire page and it says class of page root. But down below this then here, we have one of those universal sections. So if I were to scroll up to the top, you'd see this exact same number up at the top where the styling is for this section. And then if we close this, we can come down to the next universal section right there. And then inside or below that, I should say, then we get into our regular section. So here we got our section container version one. Again, I'm speculating that you're going to have version one, version two, version three as you go forward on this. And then here we have just all of our sections stacked up on top of each other. So let's just open up one of these sections. And so the CSS naming is pretty much the same. They are using bootstrap on this. That's why you see like here we have a class of container right there. If I slide this over a little bit, we have a class there of container. Then we have container inner. And in that case there, it's V2, but there's no slash. So I'm not quite sure what that means. But then inside of that, we have a row, which again indicates to me that this is still on bootstrap, which is good because then it makes it a lot easier for, um, for making it look good, making it responsive on mobile. And then inside of here, then we have, let me see here, where do we go to here? Here was our row, and then here we had our column. And in this case here, it says column, column MD6, which again, because Bootstrap has 12 columns across the page, we're using up half the page, and so we're going to have six of those columns being taken up. So that's why it's call MD6, and then the second column also is call MD6 because they're split evenly in half across the page. And so then let's just go into let's go into this one right here. So then we got our call inner just like we had before. And then we come down and we got our headlines. So headline version one, subheadline and headline version. These are all version ones because only one style apparently was made when this was built. And then let's open up that. And we got our headline, we got our span, we got our text inside of it right here. And, um, that's that's pretty much it. Now there were some other cool things in here, and I could hunt around for a while and uh, bore you guys trying to find them again. But they are also using heavily relying upon flex. So maybe if we come down to just down to this next section down here, maybe this is where I saw it again. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of your time on me bebopping around with this thing. But uh, like I said, they're using Flex quite a bit, which again, I'm really glad to see. Flex is very, very important. It's definitely going to be uh, part of a lot of my trainings going forward is how to work in Flex because people, I saw a guy the other day talking about how hard it was for him to build this three column row. And I was like, I looked at that and I go, dude, that's like one line of CSS. One line of flex, you can take those three columns, put them side by each, make them all exactly the same height, and no matter how much text is in there, you make them all exactly the same height, and seriously, it's it's one line of CSS code. That's it. Um, but either way, so that's it. I can ramble on forever about this, but it's pretty cool. They are moving forward. Uh, one thing they are missing in here, I've been told that maybe it was an oversight. We'll find out very quickly, and that is data titles. So there's no data titles in here, but each one of these elements has a unique... Uh, uh, a unique class identifier here. And I was looking at how that is coming out. I'm guessing it's obviously automatically generated. And do they mean anything other than just a random number? At this point, I'm not really sure either until we get inside the editor and I can see what it is that is generating them in the first place. So that's all I have right now. Uh, if you want to reach out with any questions on this, please feel free to do so. But at this point, especially as far as a timeline for CF 2.0 being released, your guess is as good as mine. So as always, any questions, let me know.